Hey YouTube, it's your girl Razia J and I am back with another video. It has been so long. I know, I know. Don't kill me. If you are new to my channel, I would ask that you like, subscribe, and comment down below and let me know that you're new. To everyone that is my faithful followers and my faithful YouTube besties, I just want to say hey, 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 guess who's back? I know, it's been a while. I'm kicking myself because I know it's been a long time coming, but I'm back today with another video. This video is five tips on how to secure your dream virtual field placement. If you don't know, now you know. Your girl is a social work student and in lights of COVID and everything going on, I had to start a field placement back in August and outside wasn't open yet, especially not in my state. I live in New York. Outside wasn't open and I had to secure a field placement. Um, I knew that I didn't want to graduate later than I expected to. So I knew that I had to do what I had to do to get this field placement. And by securing this field placement, I secured not one, but two. I found some tips that really helped me get to my end goal. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. So stay tuned as I share the five tips to landing your dream field placement. Tip number one, show up. I know it sounds very cliche to tell someone to show up to a virtual um, interview, but the truth of the matter is when you're interviewing on Zoom, it is so much easier to say, hey, I'm going to throw on a regular t-shirt. I'm going to keep on my pajama pants because they're not going to see my bottom half. But the truth of the matter is you want to show up and you want to show out. For me, I got dressed from head to toe. I did my hair. I did my makeup. I had my little blazer on. I even had shoes on, guys, and I was at my kitchen table. The thing about this is that it shifts your perspective into interview mode. So you go into the interview ready to do your best, ready to give your best. I often hear people say, if you look good, you do good. That's something I got from my girl, Patricia, God's Design One here on YouTube. If you look good, you do good. And that is a model that I'm taking into my professional life now. If I look good, I'm going to do good. So tip number one, show up. Show up. Put on your blazer. Put on your jeans. Put on your slacks. Sh whatever you do, just show up. Show up. Show up. Tip number two. Tip number two, do your research, guys. As a social work student, it is imperative to do your research when you're going into these interviews even more when it's a virtual interview. The reason why I say do your research, you're not the only one interviewing. In my cohort alone, I had people doing the same interviews I was doing. And it's a little bit intimidating because you don't know who's gonna land the internship. But for me, I knew that researching both agencies put me ahead of the game. So when my interviewer was asking me questions, I had valuable information to share on. I had the tools needed to say why the internship was made for me because I knew a little bit about the agency. So when I say do your research, if they have a website, look at it. If they have a mission statement, memorize a few parts of it. If they have core values that they stand by, know just one or two so you can carry a conversation Know who your interviewer is. You may not know their interviewing style, but by looking at the person on the website and reading their bio, you get a glimpse of who they are. So research the agency, research the person that you have set up your interview with, and last but not least, have a conversation. Don't allow your interview to turn into an interrogation. Have a conversation. So when you research, you're able to carry a conversation. Tip number three. Tip number three is a very important one. And the reason why I'm saying that this is a very important one is look at yourself and ask yourself this question before you even go into interview. Will I be able to do my best in a virtual space? Tip number three is knowing that productivity is important. Even as a social work student, coming into this profession, you learn so much in class academically that when you go into your first field placement, it's now time to implement what you have learned. Going into a place that has an office space, 
you turn on mentally that you are at internship and you're going to do your best. For me, my office is right here. My office is my master bedroom. My office is my kitchen table. My office is my actual in-home office. So productivity is something that you have to think about. Tip three is, is equally as important as one and two. Are you going to be able to produce quality work in a virtual space? Are you going to be able to show up to your Zoom meetings without distractions, focus on the task at hand, and are you able to work without someone breathing down your back? To land a virtual field placement, you have to sell yourself to your interviewer. You have to let them know like, hey, I'm good at working alone. I don't need a lot of guidance. If I have questions, I ask them, but you don't need to finger feed me every little thing. Tip number four, tip number four is this, sell yourself, sell yourself. Sis, bro, gems, gents, nobody on this earth can be you, nobody. One thing I regret doing when I applied for this particular social work program, I didn't sell myself. Um, my personal statement was it was good, but if I had a do-over, I would sell Razia. I wouldn't humbly brag. I would brag. I would let them know why I'm the it factor. For me, going into my interview with two amazing agencies, I knew that it was so important for me to let them know why I was it. I knew other people in my cohort was interviewing, so that means other people at other schools were interviewing. But I needed to sell to them why I was it, why I was the perfect fit why I'm the match. So I want to stress the importance of selling yourself. If you stopped in a Walgreens and you gave advice to someone that looked like they were in distress, sell that. If you like to research and you are knowledgeable on something that the agency stands behind, sell that. If you have personal experience that ties you into the agency perfect, sell that. Whatever it is about you that makes you the highest running candidate, sell it. Don't it's, sell it. That's all I can say. Sell who you are. I mean, don't make up things that you're not. But if you're this person and you know you're the, the sauce, sell it. Tip number five, ask questions. Ask questions. Let the interviewer know that you are equally as invested in your time as an intern as they are. It's an equal investment. I want to know what you're going to offer me here. I want to know how I'm going to grow as an intern. I want to know what this agency will offer me in perspective of actual tangible um, experience that I can take into my professional career. Because as an intern, this is your entry into the field of social work. So I just want to say, ask questions. You're not here to be interrogated. You're here to let others know that you are so invested in your future as a social worker that you did all five steps. First, you showed up and you didn't show up raggedy. You showed up and you looked your best. Your hair was tidy. Your hair was neat. Your nails were manicured. Your clothes were ironed. It looked like you thought about what you were going to wear. Step number two, you did your research. You knew just as much about them as they knew about you. Your resume sold you to them and got you the interview, but now you're letting them know that, hey, I researched. So I, I wanted this interview just as much as you wanted to interview me. Tip number three, will you be able to be good in a virtual space? Is this a place that you see yourself learning and cultivating all the tools needed for the profession? And are you able to work without being micromanaged? You have to ask yourself, am I just trying to get this placement or am I going to be able to leave this placement knowing that I learned something else? Knowing that I'm leaving this placement with tools to make me a better change agent, to make me a better social worker, to make me a better person. Tip number four, sell yourself. Sell yourself. Let them know why you are the best candidate. Let them know why they need to give you this placement. Let them know how important it is for you to land this placement. 
And last but not least, ask questions. No question is a dumb question. If you ask questions, it looks like you care. It looks like you want to be well informed. It looks like you're not just interviewing for the placement, but you're also trying to see if they're a good fit for you. It looks like after this interview, I'm going to be thinking of whether I should take this placement if it's offered or if I should look elsewhere. It lets them know that you are invested in your future. I can't sell that enough. To be invested in your future proves to people that you will do what it takes to be there. You will do what it takes to learn. You will do what it takes to do your best. Thank you for watching my video today. I am thankful that you took the opportunity to listen to my five tips on securing a virtual field placement as a social work student. Until next time, I wish you all well. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay well informed.